All right, I want to talk about the lesser known features of json.stringify. So the JSON object has the stringify method and the parse method for converting things back and forth between objects and arrays and strings. A uh, great way to encode and decode things, especially if you're working with local storage. But there's a couple of additional parameters that you can pass to object uh, or string json.stringify. So here's the method json.stringify. The first parameter we pass in is always the thing that you want to convert from an object or an array into a string. So if I run this basic code sample here, we can see there is the object. So just as we defined it here, it's written out. Okay, simple enough. But there's two other parameters that we can add. So the first one, here we are, is json.stringify. We're going to pass in the object. And then the second parameter is going to be an array. This array is a whitelist for what do you want to allow to come out of that object. So I can say, well, I want to include age. I want to include angry. And I'm going to include the last name. So those three parameters. And these are strings, so I should wrap them in quotation marks. There we are, our three parameters. And then I will write this out. So as the second one with a new line in between, just to make it easier to read in my console. So I'll write this out again. There we are, age, angry, and last. So I've whitelisted the things that I want to extract. So if I have a giant object and I just want to get a few things out of it, this is a quick and easy way to do it. So it's, it's almost like doing a filter, an array filter on the object. Now the second parameter, we used an array here, but we can also pass in an object. And that object is going to be a function. The function will serve to run some sort of filtering. We can do any kind of filtering that we want just like an array.filter method has a function that we run and it returns kind of true or false as to whether or not things stay in the array, our function that we put in as the next parameter here so we pass in the object and then you know, a function called replace or filter or something like that. The name is not important, it's just the fact that this is going to be a function. So we're going to run that. We need to define what this function is going to be. The function will accept two parameters, the key and the value. So here's the keys, name, last, age, angry, best, and armed. And the values will be Walter, subject, 50, true, 200, and true. If you want to filter based on the key, if you want to filter based on the val, all we have to do is either return undefined or something else. If we pass back undefined, it means that element will no longer be include, included in the object that is being stringified. So let's say we're going to do an if statement here. If type of val is spring else. So I'm going to say if it's a string, return All right, let's just do that. We're going to return the string string in all uppercase. Otherwise, return whatever the value was. Okay, and we'll log this out as our third one. There we go. And right here, three string, string, and then the others are the same. So let's do this. Let's change this to undefined. Now our new list here, age, angry, best score, armed. The first and last name are not showing up in this list because we returned undefined if the type was string. So we removed these first two parameters right here. We can change this to number or boolean or something else to get the same sort of effect. There we are. Now the numbers are gone from this list. So that's the replacement function or replacer function, whatever you want to call it, the filter function. 
this will replace or remove from your object as it's doing the stringify or just before it does the stringify option. Now our final parameter, so the second one can be either an array or a function. The third one is going to be what we want to do in front of each one of these things as they're being written out. If we want to add spaces or if we want to add some other characters. So let's say we're going to call json.stringify again. Um, we're going to pass in null as our function. And then here we can say I want four spaces. Just have to call log and write out our str. And we'll put our number four is what we're doing here. Okay, let's clear this out. We'll run this again. And there we are. Now, the curly brace at the start and at the end are there, and then we've got four spaces in front of each one of these. So it's kind of like a, a, a pretty fi. It's making it pretty for printing out. That's what this third parameter is really good at. And it doesn't have to be a number. We can just copy and paste this. Instead of doing this, let's say I'm going to put four tabs in front of each one. Run it again. There we are. Here's the four spaces and here's the four tabs being put out. So you can put anything you want inside of here. Let's see, I'll put a the character X, the character X, the character X after the first three. There we go, first tab, second tab, third tab, fourth tab. And you can put whatever you want up to 10 characters. So if you had a, a variable that contains some big long string, you can put it in there and it'll take the first 10 characters and place that in front of each one of these lines. All right, there you go. Those are some of the lesser known uh, features that you get with object.stringify or json.stringify. Any questions, please leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.